Hey, what's up everybody? It's Sebastian here, back with another video today. We're going to be talking about Fallout 76, because I've recently been getting back into it a little bit, and I'm really actually enjoying it. So, when I look on YouTube and stuff, all I see is the negativity surrounding this game, the horrible things people have to say about it for the most part. Some people like it, of course, but most of the reaction has been negative, and it's been that way since the game basically came out. Now, I understand all that. But today, I want to talk about why Fallout 76 isn't as bad as you think. And I'm not talking about the atomic shop. I'm not talking about the canvas bag situation or the nuka rum situation. I'm not talking about Fallout first. I don't want to get into the monetization of the video game because I think that's a different topic. I just want to talk about why the game Vanilla Fallout 76 is not as bad as you think. So let's get into it. So I'm going to be talking off the dome here for a little bit, so forgive me, but I have a few points I want to touch on, so let's get started. The first big pro is it's online. This is something Fallout Online that people have been dreaming about and thinking about since the first Fallout game however many years ago. It's pretty awesome that we actually got to see this, even if it's not exactly what we wanted. I think Fallout Online is something that Fallout fans were a little bit afraid of, but they wanted it at the same time. So Bethesda took the time to make that game, even if it could have been better. I agree with that, but I think getting Fallout Online in the first place is a very interesting thing. Now, the other good point about it is we got Fallout 76 after Fallout 4. And we're not going to see another Fallout game for at least five years. They're going to make Elder Scrolls 6, they're going to make Starfield, and then maybe they'll revisit the original Fallout again, and maybe they'll make the single player at that time. But just like the Skyrim video game came out, and then they made ESO, and now they're waiting a long time for the next, Sky for the next Elder Scrolls game, and that's kind of what Fallout fans didn't want. We waited a long time for five years from New Vegas until Fallout 4, and I think getting this Fallout 76 game with constant support until the next Fallout game is going to help alleviate the weight that Fallout fans were experiencing during that time period. So I don't think Bethesda wants to have that really hyped period again. And I think that's part of the reason we got a Fallout Online so that we had something that was getting updates, getting new content that was Fallout related. So we have something to play if we don't like their other games. Now. Another big thing is the world is massive. I don't care if it's not as filled and packed with items and stuff as the other games, but it's like four times the size of Fallout 4, so there's a lot to explore. I know it's not the place that everyone wanted, but I don't think West Virginia is that bad. I'm very... I, I really like it, and I like how they split it up into different zones, and I like how there's different fields all over the map. I like how there's different environmental factors, so I, I, I don't think that's such a big deal. I think it's a big game, and I think that's something we need to appreciate. Another pro is that, like I alluded to before, it's getting constant support. Like, updates all the time, they have new content plans, we got the Battle Royale, we have Fallout First, which allows you to have private servers, which I'm not a fan of, but anyways, new stuff all the time. And with Wastelanders coming out, a really big new thing that people are excited about having human NPCs back in the Wasteland. So I think that's something that we should take and we should be happy about because it's free. So if you already bought the game and you're disappointed with it, this is the perfect time to try it again with new characters, with new stuff to do, a whole new quest line. Now, another thing is the different time period. I know Fallout fans have wanted to explore pre-war, but... I don't know if that would be much fun since the Fallout is Fallout because the bombs fell. So I think the different time period 25 years after the bombs drop is really good because it allows us to see how the wasteland formed and where all the crafting came in and why what, what it was like back then, you know, not 200 years after the bombs dropped, but initially the, the impact, what happened, how people coped with it and what was going on at first. So I, I think that is a really good thing that we should take away from. Another pro is experimentation. This is something Fallout didn't need, but Bethesda wanted to take in a different direction. So Fallout 76 really allowed Bethesda to experiment with what was good about Fallout and what they could do with Fallout. Again, we got the Battle Royale Nuclear Winter Mode, which I wasn't a fan of, but 
nobody would pay to play that really unless it was free within the game they didn't have to give us a battle royale they did it probably took a lot of work so i think the experimentation of having fallout online even if it could have been done better again is really cool because it allows us to see and dream these things that we would never have gotten without fallout 76 so the nuclear winter playing it online with people and friends and all this other stuff really interesting another big thing is i think fallout 76 does a really good job capturing the essence of a post-war society because they put such an f emphasis on crafting even if it can be frustrating sometime and the survival aspect of the game that that's exactly what people would be going through in that time period building stuff trying to have shelter they need to eat they need to drink these are things they need to worry about and think about and i think bethesda making it such a hardcore video game making you have to think about all these survival things it really really captures the essence of what i think post-war would be like obviously it's not hyper realistic but to some extent it gives you that kind of fallout-esque um experience that you need to try and survive with a little bit more difficulty than just the enemies because let's be honest follow three follow new vegas follow four they're not you know actually difficult games in most part the enemies aren't overpowered but fallout 76 i struggle a lot with the enemies and it's challenging which is a different change of pace which is a little bit refreshing in the fallout universe now don't get me wrong again i'm not a fan of everything i don't care for the quests honestly just to give you a bit of background so that you don't think i'm a bethesda fanboy and all i care about is this game i don't care about the quests they're not interesting to me for the most part i don't really think i found any that stick out in my head like if i think of fallout 3 to 4 there's quests that i can think of to this day that impacted me but fallout 76 i didn't get that i didn't really care about the overseer i didn't care about rose i don't care about any of that stuff and i think it's because there's no actual human characters to empathize with and that's a little bit disappointing of course but that's why wastelanders is coming out and that's part of the reason i'm making this video i'm getting a little bit back into fallout 76 and I'm excited about Wastelanders to get that human interaction, to get the whole new storyline that again, Bethesda didn't have to give us. If they really didn't care and they weren't making money off of it, they wouldn't be doing all these massive updates because Wastelanders would take a lot of work. So I'm excited about that. I hope you are too. Another con or thing to talk about anyways is that people keep mentioning retcons that Fallout 76 isn't a canon video game. And I think that is a little bit ridiculous because Bethesda could write around any obstacle or do anything they do in the game without penalty. They could do whatever they want. They could put anything in the video game and it would be canon because they made the game. They could get off on a technicality, whatever. So people saying it's not actually Fallout, it's not a canon game like I don't want to hurt anybody's feeling but I think that's a little bit of a silly conversation to have because of course it's canon Bethesda made the game now I think that's the biggest stuff I wanted to say even if I just want to emphasize if I don't love the crafting you know there's other things to do but it's definitely a game you need to take it for what it is. If you don't take in account all of the monetization stuff, is it worth $80? Maybe not to some people, and that's totally fine. Uh, to me, it is, because I think of entertainment as like $10 an hour in Canada, whatever that is to you. So I played the game for more than eight, eight hours, so I've got my money's worth. And I think if you just think of it as just a game, if you don't necessarily take into account all of these outside factors, you know, it's just like a conversation about a movie. If you think a movie's great, but this actor is horrible, is the movie great? Yes. Yes, it is. You need to think of it that way. So Fallout 76 is great, no matter the crimes Bethesda has committed. Fallout 76, I think, is a good game. It allows me to play Fallout with people I love and are friends with and care about. And we get to have some really cool adventures. And that's why I'm excited for what's next to come in the game. It's not my favorite game in the world. I'm just saying all the negativity around it started to bother me a little bit. So I wanted to make something to kind of combat that or at least put a different opinion out there. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I really appreciate you watching this video. I truly do. 
and I hope to talk with you in the comments. And until next time, I will see you soon. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> I like the rhyme, the rhyme, the rhymes. All of us are born with the miraculous ability to determine the direction from which sounds approach us. Let us venture into new and uncharted land. People get shook up, you know, when I'm introduced as God. 